Good evening. A welcome to all of our visitors, parishioners, and those streaming. As we celebrate the Feast of Ascension, we praise and thank God for his goodness. Our main celebrant this evening is Father Enrique. Assisting him is Deacon Bob McClellan. Please stand. the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good evening, everyone. We have today the opportunity to celebrate the ascension of the Lord. And today, the Lord, he wants to give us his last words on earth. And they are they're very important, and we need to keep in our hearts. For this reason, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge and sin and so prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were raised from the dead to bring salvation to your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you ascended into heaven and now sit at the right hand of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Oh, 
this mass for the intentions and honor of Leonard and Lucille Heller. Let us pray. O God, whose sons, son today ascend to the heavens as the apostles looked him on, on, grant, we pray, and in accordance with his promise, we may be worthy for him to live with us always on earth, and we with him in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please see. A reading from the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were still looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing here looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples, clap your hands, shout to 
God with cries of gladness. For the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise, sing praise to our King, sing praise. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. For King of all the earth is God, sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations, God sits upon his holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace one body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. And he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers, to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the extent of the full stature of Christ. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, and whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe in my name 
They will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then, the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't know if it's still true, but when I was in the retail business, we knew that, that we had to put, to get, in order to get a good response from our advertising, that we needed to get our message out in front of people at least three times. And in addition, if companies, if we would put their name in the ad or the commercial three times, then they would pay for the ad. So today, as we celebrate the Lord's Ascension, Jesus is leaving, and he left us with instructions. Kind of like a relay runner, he's passed the baton. He's completed his work here on earth and is ready to mount his throne with shouts of joy. In all three readings today, we are given a mission to accomplish. Now, his message could have gotten lost in that wonder of seeing him ascend into heaven, but it wasn't lost on his disciples. Jesus had just told them, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Each of our scripture writers also heard that last message. Have you? In the gospel, Jesus said to his disciples, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Jesus mainly confined himself to the people of Israel. Now he tells his disciples to continue his work through the whole world. Jesus says, He who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do, because I go to the Father. By sheer numbers... They, and we, are able to do what Jesus himself could not do, go to the whole world. In our days, beyond the wildest dreams of those early disciples, the Pope, or an even us, you, can reach people all over the world digitally through the Internet. And at the rate, rate that our information technology is progressing, who knows what evangelization opportunities will be available to us in the future. In our second reading, St. Paul, speaking from prison, encourages the new Christians at Ephesus that they are equipped for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, to the extent of the full stature of Christ. We are the body of Christ. And we're so fortunate to have as our identity Corpus Christi. It's a witness to the people in our area. The unity of faith that St. Paul encourages wasn't just a mission for the first disciples. They were trying to work to integrate the Jews and the Gentiles. This unity of faith is the same unity that we aspire to in our multicultural parish. We are blessed to be leaders in integrating our diversity while respecting each other's cultures. By this, we can be witnesses to our neighbors and beyond. We have a mission. Jesus gave us this mission to each one of us by your baptism you were consecrated to the mission of Christ. And there are four elements to the mission that we've been given. First, there is the duty of the Catholic community to evangelize. That is, to communicate the life vision that is contained in the scriptures 
and especially to give the gospel to all those around us. And we do that on occasion with our words, but every day, whether we're aware of it or not, we evangelize with our lives. Is your love of God evident in your life? Does your love of neighbor or care for the suffering witness to those around you? Is your life one that your neighbor or a co-worker would desire to emulate? This is the most effective way that we evangelize. Secondly, we have the task of healing. A Catholic is not simply concerned about the soul. The whole body needs to experience the effects of salvation in spirit, mind, body, feelings, and out into the surrounding environment. Jesus himself spent a lot of time healing the sick, and it was often linked with healing of the soul and of the heart. And this often led to reconciliation of a sinner. The disharmony that is sin can have a very visible effect on our bodies and on the emotions. It's not enough simply to try to heal the body by going to the doctor or the hospital. Healing involves a whole person that often requires the sacrament of confession. We have a mission. In Matthew 25, Jesus declares, as often you as you did this, or didn't do this, to one of the least of my brothers, you did it, or didn't do it, to me. The third aspect, the Holy Spirit aspect, we will hear more about next week on Pentecost. Jesus promises that the Holy Spirit will give power to his disciples. It is that power, shared by all, that comes with a vibrant vision of what life should be. It's a special power that comes from the heart, that gives people the strength in times of weakness, courage in times of fear, hope in times of despair, a power that above all gives meaning and purpose to life in all situations. In every single person we encounter, we come face to face with the presence of Jesus because that person's sheer goodness, love, generosity, compassion, courage, or concern for others. Or we may see someone who needs the touch of Jesus because of their inappropriate behavior, their hates, resentments, their violence. Or, on the other hand, their weaknesses, sickness, loneliness, or despair. As Pope Francis has said, the church is a field hospital to care for the wounded. As the body of Christ, that care comes from each one of us. The final aspect is that we are not on this mission alone. Jesus says, I will be with you always to the very end of time. This is the promise of Jesus. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Through his spirit, Jesus continues to work with and through his people. And so we firmly believe that he is to be found in every single person. On this Feast of Ascension, we are reminded that we have been handed the baton. We have been given a mission. In the meantime, let's not stand around looking up at the sky, but rather actively live the life that will lead us to hear those words that we long to hear. Well done, my good and faithful servant.
please stand up and we say the profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, all of the ends of the soul. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, God from light, true God from true God, begotten no made, consubstantial with the Father, in the original things were made. As men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated of the Virgin Mary, and King to reign. On his way, crucified on the cross of Pilate, then was buried, and rose again in the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and I see the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, those the living and the dead and his kingdom will not have end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, was spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Paul teaches us that we are to be people of hope. Mindful of this, we seek God's assistance. Our response is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That Pope Francis, Bishop Johnson, and the church continue to proclaim the gospel message of our ascended Savior, sharing his message of gladness and joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That our leaders work in service of justice, ever striving toward peace and consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the oppressed and the downtrodden feel the comforting presence of God, renewing their strength and their sense of worth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the sick, infirmed and de dependent appreciate the loving care of their dedicated caregivers let us pray to the lord lord in your mercy hear our prayer let the faithful of this community be filled with grace and hunger for wisdom rejoicing in the saving power of the risen christ let us pray to the lord lord in your mercy hear our prayer for abundant blessings on the children who receive holy eucharist for the first time we pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That those who have died will rejoice in the reward of everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember Leonard and Lucille Heller, whose intentions we honor at this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort and compassion, you are with us until the end of the world. Hear our prayers that we offer to Christ our risen Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. O God, whose only begotten Son, our High Priest, is seated ever living at your right hand to intercede for us, grant that we may approach with confidence the throne of grace, and there obtain your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift to your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the Lord Jesus the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens, as the angels gaze in wonder, mediator between God and man, judge of the world and the Lord of hosts, he ascended, not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he our head and founder has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, Holy O Lord, and all you have created, rightly give you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, and they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mm-hmm. 
de misterios fe. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing a sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, and whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing, unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Johnson, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen gradually to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion and merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to the departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you and their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through healing with healing in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As the Savior command and for the teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray for every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gradually grant her peace in unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace with you. Conos. Lamb of 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who take away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Scheme of man can 
There will be a special holy hour in the year of St. Joseph on Monday, tomorrow. No, excuse me, Monday is two days from now. At, from 7 to 8 p.m. at Corpus Christi, right here, for the year of St. Joseph. This month, the holy hour will be in Spanish, and everyone is welcome. The faith formation registration will be available next Sunday after all Masses. This will be faith formation for the following year, next year. You can uh, also register at the parish office after Monday, the May 24th. Please bring baptismal certificates if baptized outside of the parish. And there will be catechist training, uh, which will be offered this Wednesday, May the 19th, from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. in Corpus Christi Social Hall. The, unfortunately, the Pentecost Vigil Adoration that was scheduled for May the 22nd has been canceled due to a conflict. Thank you to everyone who gave their time and service in the successful completion of our parish carpeting project. Your heroic efforts in this massive project resulted in a beautification of our worship space and social gathering spaces and saved the parish over $6,700 in cost. Again, a sincere thank you. We couldn't have done it without you. And a notice about repairs. Repairs are going to begin this week, weather permitting, on the Corpus Christi Queen of Apostles site, Main, and the south parking lot. The project will include repairs and repaving of damaged areas as well as the resealing and restriping of both the lots. Limited parking will be available during the repair phase. This is during the week. The lots will be barricaded off and not available during the resealing and restriping phases. We encourage you to use the street parking whenever possible. Both lots, however, will be fully open during the weekend to support parking for mass. Uh, status updates and parking availability will be communicated through flock notes, Facebook, and the parish website or you can call the parish office. For any questions, please call the parish manager. Thank you. I want to say thank you, especially the Combov for today, the preaching, the homily. Thank you for serving in our community. I appreciate a lot. Thank you, Connor, to play the music and sing. Thank you, Patrick, to help us with the scream. Beth Wilson, I appreciate to be the lector. And Anne, the sacristan and coordinator for the Mass. The hospitality ministers, Dennis and Mike and Jim, 19. Uh, thank you so much for your help here in our community. And we invite we need more volunteers. You want to help us and serve, like to be a lector. We would like to be also part of the choir. We want to be one of the hospitality ministers. I appreciate a lot uh, you offer your time, your talent to the Lord. I appreciate it. Also, uh, we received a letter from our bishop and the diocese about the mask. They, we are, we have, we already have received the vaccine. They suggest is not any more requirement, but uh, we we show next time the letter over there and we explain. Okay, and also we are going back to the normality. I think they ask to we don't have any more next week close. All the pews, all the pews that are open, okay. And that's it. Thank you. Also, I don't know. In many countries today, we celebrate our teachers. I will have a special thanks for our teachers and the people they taught us, especially our parents, grandparents, and friends and godparents. Then they taught us important things in our lives. The Lord bless all the teachers, especially for the amazing work they do to form our youth 
and for especially the parents, their children. Thank you so much, all the teachers and parents and grandparents to form our youth generation and for our children to be as Jesus and to serve others. I appreciate a lot. Please stand up. Let us pray. May these gifts we have received from your altar, Lord, kindle in our hearts a longing for the heavenly homeland and cause us to press forward, following in the Savior's footsteps to the place where, for our sake, he entered before us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. We have a special blessing today for the ascension of the Lord. Please, bow down. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. For on this very day, His only begotten Son pierced, pierced the highest of heaven and unlocked for you the way to ascend where He is. May He grant that, as Christ, after His resurrection, was seen and plainly by his disciples. So, when he comes as judge, he may show himself merciful to you for all eternity. Amen. Amen. And may, who believe, he seated with the Father in his majesty, know with joy the fulfillment of his promise to stay with you until the end of the time. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen.